evening. Good morning, judges and my dear colleagues. Uh, so, just keep these two lights on. The rest. Before I start, I just like to do a very short activity with you all. And uh, for those of you all who have already seen my presentation, I would encourage you all to pretend like you all have never seen this before. Okay? So uh, the next slide that I'm going to show you, I want you to really, really focus on this slide. I need your absolute focus because there is something that we need to identify. Are we ready? <laughs> focus on this for a couple of seconds. Now before us, we have two circles, the blue and the red. They both appear identical. But let me tell you, these circles are not of the same size. If you focus hard enough, if you really focus, one circle will appear larger than the other. Really focus. I'll give you a couple of seconds. I want you to really focus because they are not <laughs> of the same size. To how many of us does the blue circle appear larger than the red? Just a show of hands. Alright, fantastic. Now to how many of us the red circle appears larger? A show of hands. Thank you very much. And to how many of us our initial instinct was that both these circles are exactly the same? But still some of us changed our opinion. Why? Because I manipulated your thoughts. I manipulated what you perceived initially. I made you believe that these two circles are different in size. I made you believe differently. My friends, this is the basis of my presentation. I'll be starting from now. As far back as we can remember, theories... As far back as we can remember, Theories have been whispered in the wind. Theories have been circulated in society. Theories that have developed over a period of time due to certain events or occurrences that have happened. As far back as 300 BC, theories have, have revolved around the death of Alexander the Great. Was he poisoned? Did he die of battle wounds? Or was Aristotle behind his death? To the burning of Rome, while Nero played his lyre, to anti-Semitism. The Jews, for the longest time, have been a targeted race. And there are umpteen number of theories that revolve around this, some even leading up to World War II. <laughs> Was Mahatma Gandhi behind the death of Bhagat Singh? Two people with the same goal in mind, but two very opposing ideologies. Satyagraha, non-violence, victory through violence. Did he have something to do with his death? The Bilderberg Group, a group of elite political leaders, financiers, businessmen, media people and academic scholars who are believed to control every major event that takes place. <laughs> to the assassination of JFK, was it a solo act or was the CIA and the government behind his assassination? To the landing on the moon, 400,000 NASA employees put two men on the moon. It took one man to destroy that scientific evidence. It never happened. To this beautiful lady, who she? Princess, Princess Diana. Diana. Was her death an accident? Or was Prince Charles in the MI6 behind her death? To this absurdity, to all of us sitting over here, this is absolute absurdity. Why? Because science points to the fact that the earth is spherical in shape. But there is still a group that exists known as the Flat Earth Society that believe the earth is flat. In 2016, B.O.B. rapper, American rapper B.O.B., he said and he tweeted with very convicting arguments that as I rise higher above the earth, the horizon appears flat. It does not curve. And therefore, the earth must be flat to chemtrails? Is the government secretly controlling us by chemicals that they shower down on us? 
to love jihad, an Islamophobic conspiracy engineered by the Hindu Dwar. To this young man, he, the number of theories around his death, to some going to the extent of saying that he's in hiding and will come back. To 5G, very comical in the UK during the pandemic, many people believe that it was the radiations that were responsible for our immunity to be decreased and therefore they went out into the streets burning 5G towers. Crazy, but comical. And to finally, the bio-weapon. Or was it a way for the government to control the population? All these and many more are what we call conspiracy <coughs> theories. Now my core objective of my presentation was to know if young adults and adolescents are vulnerable and susceptible to misinformed information and content. And for this reason, I conducted a survey between the ages of 16 to 35. That was my core conduct. conduct. And my second objective was to identify if people turn towards conspiracy theories because they find them comforting. And I got fantastic responses in my survey which I will share with you. All right. Remember, my friends, that 99% of the time, a conspiracy theory arises during a time of crisis, hardships, difficulties, a war, a pandemic, a financial crisis, a recession. Why? Because people need to make sense of what is happening. We need to find comfort in something that we cannot understand. And my final objective, to understand if conspiracy theories alter or affect the way we perceive information. I read a piece of information and I believe it to be true. It's the truth. And suddenly I get another piece of information and now I am caught in between confronted by two pieces of information that I cannot seem to understand what is true and what is false. And my, my survey clarifies all of this. I'm not creating awareness. I just wanted to understand how it affects young adults, young minds. What is a conspiracy theory? The dictionary definition is on the board. But according to this young, handsome man, he's a social psychologist. His name is Dr. Sander van der Linden. And he says, an attempt to explain the ultimate cause of an important societal event as part of a sinister plot, something dark, something harmful, and a sinister event conjured up by a secret alliance of powerful individuals and organizations. You have the elite group, you have the powerful, you have the event, and you have us. <coughs> are, we, are you all with me so far? Yes. <coughs> now, my dear friends, conspiracies are of two types. One is a real conspiracy. Conspiracies that have been manufactured or created <coughs> because of credible, authentic sources or based on journalists, based on whistleblowers. And these theories or these conspiracies have been proven. All right? And on the other hand, <coughs> we have the nobodies, the narcissistic people, the less educated, the uneducated, people grappling in the dark for meaning. People looking for some sense of comfort because they can't make sense of what is happening. And therefore, conspiracy theories are based on the 3N model. Now, what is this 3N model? The need, the narrative, and the network. And what is this need? This need is my demand. The demand to recover something significant that has been lost. As a human being, I need to make sense of things that are happening around me. If I can't, I begin to panic. Now there are three psychological needs. Autonomy, competence, and relatedness. But what is autonomy? As an individual, my perception of control has been hindered. We as human beings need to be in immediate control of our immediate surroundings. And when this perception of control has been hindered, I am unable to make sense of the world, competence. I cannot understand what is happening around me. And therefore, 
I feel a disconnect from society. Relatedness. I cannot relate to my immediate society. Now when these three psychological needs arise, there is a necessity to create a narrative, which is a story. We as human beings, we thrive on storytelling. We are fantastic storytellers. Yes or no? Agreed? Fantastic storytellers. From individual to individual, or generation to generation to generation, we tell stories. And once I have my story, I need to find like-minded people to spread my theory. I create my network. Now, once my theory is out there, it is debatable. Now, according to cognitive scientist Philip von Bach, he says that the sense of understanding is contagious. There was a study, or an experiment rather, that was done in the 1980s by a psychologist by the name of Thomas Lando. And he conducted an experiment to determine the memory retention of the average human being. And in his experiment, he took a group of people because he wanted to understand how fast we learn and how fast we forget. So a group of individuals with words, numbers and images. And he extrapolated his experiment over a lifespan of 70 years. And his findings are phenomenal. He says that the average human being has a memory retention of just 1 GB. He did it in bytes, computer bytes. Just 1 GB. Which means there is not much that we know. There is not much that we have inside our heads to make sense of the world around us. So, when knowledge is circulating, I perceive knowledge in a certain way, I understand that knowledge and then my understanding passes on to X, Y, Z. It is very contagious. That is not the problem. The problem arises when I take this contagious sense of understanding, this contagious understanding, and I pair it with individual ignorance. Now that is a very, very toxic recipe. Now what is individual ignorance? It is not not knowing something. Individual ignorance is my reluctance, my refusal, my inability to fact check, to critically ana analyze to cross-check information that I have received. And these two, the contagious understanding and ignorance put together leads to a lot of negative aspects, psychological effect. I have already discussed this with you earlier, but the feeling of powerlessness, the disillusion, the, disillusion, the anomie, all these psychological effects, mistrust, which in turn would lead to an attitude change. When faced with the conspiracy theory, we begin to change our attitude towards society, towards individuals, towards institutions, and there is a polarization that is created. What is polarization? It is a division in society between two groups. There are two groups that are being created. And which are these groups? The ones that believe, the believers, and the non-believers, the ones who are for and the ones who are against. And because of that, there's prejudice. It is us versus them. I look at a person and I begin to judge because I cannot accept. Health concerns, many, mental, physical, psychological, spiritual health concerns. Science denial, one of my favorites. The evidence is before us. There has been research work, there is paperwork, but hell no, we don't believe that man landed on the moon. The earth is not spherical in shape, it is flat. Science denial to a political stance. I take a stand on certain issues, I take a stand on certain governments, I begin to mistrust institutions and governments to extremism and violence. Riots, burnings, killings, bloodshed, and my favorite, 
workplace disagreements. Why my favorite? Since we all work together, we are colleagues. Right? Hostility that is created in the workplace, unable to respect others. And the most important, sometimes, for DV service benefit, it leads to the diminishing of the company image. And all this, because we don't fact check, no credible sources, no critical analysis, no respect. I'm not saying acceptance. You don't have to accept everyone's belief. But you have to respect. There's a big difference between acceptance and respect. And open-minded and broadness. Now, in my survey, I took the age groups between 16 to 44, but my main focus was on the ages between 16 to 35, adolescents and young adults. And as you can see, I've got major responses from the ages of 25 to 35. I asked them a series of questions, which I have presented a few over here, but not in the order that I asked. The first question, how often do you cross-check about information you receive? If you look at the analysis, if you look at the responses that I have received, there is the minor, the minority, which is the red, says all the time. The rest, the blue says never, which is still a scary number, 8%. But many of them say only if information is absurd. Now how sure can you be that information is absurd? Why would you not cross check? Next, do you think a conspiracy theory affects the way we perceive information? Majority said yes. And hence, my, one of my objectives were proven. The third question, one of, my, one of my favorites. Do you think that you would turn to a theory or an idea because it appears to be more comforting or aligned with your thought process? You can see that many of them have said yes, but the yellow is, I'm not sure. It seems like a possibility that I would turn, which means many of us, are searching for comfort and because of this we turn to theories that help us feel better. I finally asked them about real conspiracies and conspiracy theories and I asked them on a scale of 1 to 5, 1 being terribly affected and 5 being I don't really care, where do you stand by things that affect you in the world? And many of them as you can see are sitting on the fence, they are in between. Which means to tell us to some extent that people are affected by what is happening. They cannot make sense of what is taking place in the world around us. And finally I asked them about the pandemic. I had a number of other questions. And I, but I asked them about the pandemic which was very important because recently we had a number of theories like so said. And we can see that many of them said, I asked them whether it is a biological weapon or it depopulates the world. And many of them said, uh, there is a possibility. Now my survey was a pan-India survey. I have sent this out to friends and people that I know all across the country. And this was their answer that there is a possibility. Now this to me seems ridiculous. But this is what our young adults understand. Now in conclusion I just like to say, conspiracy theories are never going to die. They have been with us since the beginning of time. As, if I talk about Abrahamic religions, as far back as Adam and Eve. But I just like to leave you with one thought. Read what you must. Absorb with prudence and caution. Because only fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Thank you very much. Excellent. Really outstanding mind going. Hitler was a, I think a, an advisor, Bobes. He was saying, when you speak anything hundred times, it becomes, yeah, becomes a real. Your question. Okay. Your, audience, your audience, I'm not an expert, please go easy on me. <laughs> As you would have dug deeper into this topic, uh, we cannot forget the Illuminati. Yes. So what is your so, point of view on the Illuminati, see? Dark Web and the Simpsons? Did you see my first uh, slide? It was the Illuminati. Yeah, exactly, that's all. Right. Now I have not dug much into conspiracy theories and the theory and how these theories evolved and what was the division that was created. 
what I did was more to find out how these theories, because I want to take you through a journey from the past to the present, which means conspiracy theories are constantly there. People are constantly coming up with ways to comfort themselves. And I wanted you to understand how this affects uh, the young minds. The young minds that are still trying to find an identity. Because many of them, their identity is not crystallized yet. They are still trying to figure out who they are. And from the information that they observe. So I cannot really get into your question about, uh, to give you a little more information on the Illuminati. But uh, my topic was a little different from... Okay, and do you think the movies they are drawing them more towards uh, this conspiracy theories because if we have seen yeah. the Batman in that also they are showing the dark web. Yeah. So, so, so dark the, web the kids who are not knowing about that also come to know about so that. So conspiracy, conspiracy theories are made for a lot of fantasies for us. Movies, songs, a lot of <coughs> entertainment. Now the thing is when you watch a movie, like I said, critically anal analyze and fact check. So whatever Whatever you watch, whatever you see, whatever you perceive, whatever information you get, alright? And this is what you, you need to teach your kids as well, at home or at school. Don't just blindly believe. For example, the Da Vinci Code also, one of the movies which I watched and which uh, has a lot of conspiracy behind it. But it's not something that I blindly follow because you have to actually fact check. Alright, because Dan Brown has written from a fictional yes. plus uh, a reality, but... Most of his books are based yes, on conspiracy. a lot of conspiracies. Yeah. Because it gives us a lot of entertainment. It's very exciting for us. It allows us to critically think about things and debate. Great. Okay, madam. Uh, sir, can you move on to the slide? First slide where you have the questions starting. Questions starting, yes. Absolutely. This one. Yeah, the food one. Like you ask, like if this one. you know, it, it is comforting for them, why they accept it? Whether it is comforting. But so, don't you think that when it is such kind of a conspiracy, they know that this is not good for us? Then how can they accept that it is comforting to them? The reason for them to accept cannot be comforting, no? Because it is a conspiracy theory, and they know that this is something that I should not do. No. There's a reality. The reality exists in the world. You see it happening. All right. For example. Uh, many people, like Sir so said, many people during the pandemic were not taking the vaccinations because they believe the government was controlling us to that. Right? Now, when there's a reality happening, you see what is taking place in the world, but you are not happy with what is taking place in the world. You want an alternative solution. There is no alternative solution. But suddenly one day, a man wakes up and says, this is what is actually happening. What would you turn to? You would turn to the things that make you happy. Exactly, it is not comforting for me. It is comforting for you. So I cannot accept that. You will accept, you will not accept the reality, you will accept what is comforting, you will accept, for example, many people believe that the moon landing was fake. Why? Even though 400,000 NASA employees sent Neil Armstrong and uh, Buzz Aldrin to the, Aldrin to the moon. Alright? One man, it took just one man, okay? His name is uh, Bill Casey or something, Bill something, alright? It took just one man to make people doubt whether that actually happened. Now, there are many theories that revolve around this. And many people who feel that the government is trying to hide something, trying to conjure something, trying to make up something, they feel, uh, I feel more comfortable <coughs> with this rather than this reality. So when you feel more comfortable with something, you, you, your instinct is to move in that direction. Like so you can have a difference of opinion, not for the same thing. Difference of opinion. Absolutely, there is always difference yeah, of opinion. Yeah, opinion. Yeah. That's why I said, you always need to respect other people's mm -hmm. beliefs and opinions. That's very important. <coughs> I asked, I think, uh, about 11, 12. I've not come, covered all the questions over here. Uh, my project has around I think, 11 or 12 questions. Some were uh, not just uh, not just uh, optional questions, they were subjective questions as well. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes ma'am. Sir, you said that 3M are the main reasons for the conspiracy. That's a psychological aspect to it. There should be one E also. If you can Keep elaborate. In mind, the main conspiracy that generates because of the person who has an evil mind in there. And they it's want... It's not really an evil mind ma'am. It's not, it's not something... He doesn't want... He, there's no evil. See, there are narcissistic people. All right, people who are self-obsessed with themselves and they want some sort of limelight. Okay, then there are people who are grappling in the dark. See, basically they are looking for comfort. Now, if I say that you are looking for comfort, does that make you an evil person? See, I have an example. This COVID-19 
Yes. 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 There is a conspiracy. Is it for? Some people do it for kicks. It's not. They're not evil. They do it for kicks. But uh, this, what whoever has done this conspiracy, they, his mind or whoever is, his mind will be like a evil power only. How can you say that his mind is evil? Because such people like terrorism, you can say, whatever is going good, they are showing that in a negative way. So it is. Let's say I do something today. I'm just not not to argue with you. Let's say I do something today. I believe that what I am doing is right. And you oppose me, and you believe what you are doing is right. Does that make you an evil person to oppose me? In case of terrorism, is it right? <coughs> is terrorism it right? is not a conspiracy theory. Uh, can I just butt in and help, ma'am, in this? Yes. Very yes. much conspiracy. Yes, it's slightly negative. We all agree. Evil hai ke nahi? Doubtful. Doubtful. How yes. can I say this is? I'll back it up with an example. Or internet or the cricket, jante hain, bara bada hai se. 1992 वर्ल्ड कप ऑस्ट्रेलिया में ये वाला वर्ल्ड कप ऑस्ट्रेलिया में पाकिस्तान मुश्किल से सेमीफाइनल में न्यूजीलैंड विनिंग 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 सेम चीज 92 में सेम चीज यहाँ पे दूसरे सेमीफाइनल में पाकिस्तान को हरा के इंग्लैंड अगले सेमीफाइनल में इस बार भी ऑस्ट्रेलिया में यही होगा होगा बुकिंग ये कर रहे हैं और इंडिया पाकिस्तान के फाइनल के लिए मैचेस बुक किए जा रहे हैं अगर ये नहीं हो रहा है तो पाकिस्तान इंग्लैंड फिर से फाइनल होगा सेम ऑस्ट्रेलिया सेम एवरी ये बुक मेकर्स कर रहे हैं इसमें कोई ईमेल नहीं है इसमें कोई पाप नहीं है बट एंटी आईसीसी एंटी क्रिकेट एंटी एंटी बीसीसीआई लोग ये कर रहे हैं और इसको भी आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग ये भी कंस्पिरेसी के टर्म्स में आ सकता है पर बिल्कुल ही ईवल नहीं है कोई वेस्टेड इंटरेस्ट मेबी दैट वाज द वर्ड सम वेस्टेड इंटरेस्ट इवन परफेक्ट इवन द मून लैंडिंग वाज द क्वेश्चन आस्क्ड बाय अदर या इट वाज सो वी Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent performance. Just I want to ask you, how will you guide your students, or how will you guide us to how to handle this? Thank you. Thank you, sir, for asking that question. If you look at the board, I have purposely put something on the board. I don't know if many of you have noticed this because I was I I planned this for this question to arise. That is also one person. So basically, if you look at it, see there are basically the only way that we can we cannot uh, stop conspiracy theory. We cannot uh, kill conspiracy theories completely. All right. As long as people exist, as long as ideas exist, people will want to feel comfort. People will want to share their own opinion. All right. Now in schools or at home, what we can do is help students. Fact check, critically and analyze. Now I have mentioned some methods. All right, there is a method called the Socratic uh, questioning method. Uh, now this method is a method of multiple questioning to the kid without giving them answers, helping them to arrive at the answer themselves. For example, uh, let's say I ask the kids a question: uh, What is happening with uh, climate change? All right, and a kid will answer: uh, It's getting warmer. How do you know it's getting warmer? Because I see it in the news, all right. So they give you, and then you say, "Do you think other people believe this as well?" Yes, because the newscasters and televisions are showing this, and they say, and so you keep asking them questions like this till they arrive at an answer. So you are not basically imposing your opinion on them; you are allowing them to arrive at an opinion. Or the truth sandwich method, or lateral thinking. I think as a journalist, ma'am, uh, you might be aware of. Uh, yeah. See, lateral thinking is when we read and we read, okay, and we don't. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Did I say something? No, no. She looks like journalist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, lateral thinking is when you read something, but you you don't go back to cross check or to examine the source. And particular analysis, I have specified one very specific. It's called SIF. You stop. You investigate. You find a different coverage, different sources, and you trace the claim. Someone has made a claim. Take the time and teach your children how to go back and trace this. Excellent. Yes, guys. Right. How to ask for additional question? Yes. So a little louder. If you if you heard about any haunted place, and you are always. 
curious about some uh, information. What you do? As per your theory. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do as per your theory? If I hear about a content place, content place and you are always curious about so that. every content place that we see is based on some historical fact that yes. has happened. Stories, stories, historical right. facts. As for your theory, what will you do? So basically, I am looking for. I would probably take the truth sandwich method. All right, which means if Mahi Mahan, if you can help me with debunking, if you if you can help me, what is how do I simplify the word debunking? Debunking information. Breaking down. Breaking down information. So there is a theory. There is a there is something that is circulating, and I try to debunk this with truth facts. What happened? I try to dig deeper. What happened? What exactly happened? Did someone live there? Who created the story? How was the story created? Who did it? So, so basically, I just keep questioning. Will you check it practically? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no stories. Nothing for me. But you are always curious about it. Okay, Kanisha, you are curious to know. So I, I tried going to a haunted house once, but I ran away before sunset. <laughs> yeah. Your question, yes, ma'am. Sir, you talked about all this uh, methods for big pictures, like the. This is. Big, big, big pictures.
if it comforts them. There's nothing wrong with it. Yes. If it comforts me. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being comforted. Comfort, when something comforts me, I feel more at peace. Right? But the point is, is what is comforting me the truth or is it something that I'm just grabbing onto and holding onto because it makes me feel better. In which case, I slowly, as time goes by and I realize the truth, it, this comfort will lead to depression, might lead to other mental problems, might lead to XYZ problems. I hope I answered it. Yes. yes, sir. Sir, so wonderful presentation and very informative also from your end. Okay, and uh, I am also a history teacher. Okay. And I, I observed you very uh, minutely. And uh, you have written there the Socratic uh, questioning method. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, I think that uh, your your topic is very much connected to the you know that intellectualism. Your topic is very much connected to the word intellectualism. Would you please throw some light on it? I felt. I am saying that your topic, what's your topic? Your topic is? Conspiracy theories and the Yes, conspiracy theories and its effect on young minds. Now, young minds means, I always say young minds means they must be involved in critical thinking. Okay. And your topic is already based on critical thinking. That's what you say, that uh, what we are uh, uh, observing and what we are thinking. And sometimes we are being influenced by social media and other, a lot the majority is thinking. Sometimes we are feeling that what others are thinking, I am not thinking in the same way. So I am the part of minority. So this is, that's what I say, your topic is very much connected to the word intellectualism. With intellectual, there is a difference between intellectual and intelligent people. Okay, because intellectuals are always higher. Why? Because they think critically, they don't take you so easily. They will critically, they will look at you, they will listen to you and then they will, and that's what we progress. Agreed. That's what we progress. So when we talk about, uh, here I was just uh, still bring down something, Socratic, uh, you know, questioning method. Uh, could you please give me two interrogative words through which we can implement in the school this Socratic method? Two interrogative words. So, so with the Socratic, Socratic method, what I research a little bit, is uh, that there are, a series, there are a series of categories of questioning, alright? I don't really remember the categories of questioning, but in each category there are a series of questions that you can ask, especially when we are trying to uh, fact, fact check. Okay. So, uh, I say two interrogative words. More than why? Two yes. Why and how? Why and how? See, these are the two interrogative no. words generally in IGC syllabus, okay, in Cambridge. They are asked the students to prepare question on that. Right. Students will prepare question, yes. and then based on this question, you know the board will prepare question. See, this is how the critical thinking leads to number one. This is very important. Socratic questioning to interrogative words. Second thing you told BC. It is not BC. It is BCE now. BCE. Yes. 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 You hit, yes. <laughs> and the, another thing I have observed here, anti-Semitism. You talked about anti-Semitism. Could you please tell me something about anti-Semitism? Anti-Semitism is a hostility towards the Jews. The Jewish community for the longest time we are talking about right from BCE. Uh, it is not only Jews, it is an extreme prejudice against any community. Such as Hitler used to call all the Jews to yes. Those no's will be like number six. Yes. And uh, you know, uh, and you will be called in front and they were to be humiliated. And the first book what Hitler changed, that is history. Okay, yes. But anti-Semitism, this word leads to which process? Which is also connected to your topic. This anti-Semitism leads to which process? Which is very much, uh, I am giving you the clue, which is very much connected to dictatorial method of leading. Connected to dictatorial method of leading. It is called totalitarianism. 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 Okay, this is one part. Then you talked about Abrahamic religions. Yes. I think I heard about Abraham. Yes. Could you please tell me something about Abrahamic religions? Abrahamic religions are Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. That follow basically the founding father that is Abraham. 
and uh, even the uh, situation of having a need and export situation of land. Okay, we talked about Abrahamic villages which are very much connected to Islamic uh, uh, part of, uh, uh, you know, concept. In India also we have a similar type of Abrahamic religions founded but again disappeared slowly. Would you please tell me? Kabir Panthis. Kabir Panthis. Kabir Panthis. Because Kabir Panthis, they don't follow any specific religion. Okay. Yes. They, they appeared before 1945 and then they disappeared. Once they disappeared, then only these Hindu Muslim riots and the clashes, discrimination started. So Kabir Panthis has played a very pivotal role in Indian society. Kabir like, Panthis are actually, they don't follow any specific religion. They are not following Hindus, Muslim, Christian or anything. You know, you know about Bhakti movement, Kabir Sulo. So, these Kabir Panthis have played an extremely fantastic role in, in connecting Hindus and Muslims. But once they disappeared, they don't we have seen that all, uh, you know, Muslim League and others. Then, uh, you talked about conspiracy theory started. Uh, uh, now I am asking you that it conveyed in national school of uh, national school of history. How can it be conveyed to national school of history? This uh, institute. Can you tell me? In the national school of history, this conspiracy theory has been conveyed in two ways. Okay, two important words. Can you tell me? One is orientalist, and another one is anglicist. Oh, oh, do you know what is Orientalist? Orientalist, they wanted to implement the Indian education. And Anglicist means Western education. Orientalist and Anglicist. Two things are very important. And especially this is conspiracy theory we have found in this. Anyhow, it's, it's, thank you so much, sir, for the information. Thank you so much. Very nice. Thank you, observation.